How's it going everybody? I'm Josh KI6NAZ and I'm back again with another practical antenna test. Yes, we are going to do a transmission from the park here to my home and check the signal report. In addition, we got a little bit of fun stuff to test the audio coming back in today, which we've never done before. So let's get started. We're actually going to be redoing some of the antennas that we've done before because I want to get a good baseline on 70 centimeters. Yes, today we are full dual banded. We're going to have two meters and 70 centimeters reception test. So transmitting from the park, we're going to be able to test the performance of all these antennas. We're going to be doing the wonderful signal stuff signal stick again, which I have already connected to my ID52, which is the radio we're going to be testing with. In addition, something you guys have been wanting to test for a while is the Nagoya NA771, something we use on Baofengs a lot. We're bringing back the Diamond SRH77CA as I think it is a good comparable antenna to the Nagoya, but we'll find out. I also have the Nagoya NA717, which is a favorite for Baofeng users as well, as it's a really floppy antenna. I have the Long Ranger back for just a kind of a baseline on a really good antenna. This is two meter only though. And <laughs> under a lot of requests, we're going to be looking at the Tway RDO loop antenna for VHF UHF. People are calling this the Sailor Moon antenna, and I, I don't disagree. It very much looks like Sailor Moon's moon wand. So if you don't know how this works, I'm going to be transmitting on low power and high power, 2 meters and 70 centimeters from the antenna attached to the radio back to my home station. My home station has two software-defined radios running that are going to measure the, audio, the received audio signal from the radio, including this antenna, facilitated by the antenna, and that's going to give us a dB number. The higher the dB, the better, and we're going to see it on a ranked list at the end on which antennas here perform the best. So let's get started with the signal stuff. Signal stick, this is going to be 2 meters on low power. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu with the signal stuff. Signal stick, this is 2 meter low power. All right, let's do high power. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu with the signal stuff, signal stick, high power, 2 meters. At this is the signal stuff, signal stick on 70 power, power. Power, low power. Is the signal stuff, signal stick on high power, 70 centimeters. So that's the first one. Again, striking a baseline. This is generally my favorite antenna for its convenience. If you must go with an antenna that attaches to the radio, I find these to be the most convenient. By the way, if you're interested, there's an affiliate link in the description. Just an FYI, I do get a cut if you buy an antenna through them, but it's a good American-made antenna, and I think pretty effective as a handheld antenna goes. All right, so now we're going to be looking at the Nagoya NA717. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu with the Nagoya NA717. This is low power, low power, test, test. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu with the Nagoya NA717 at high power at 3.03 p.m. This is the Nagoya NA717. 17, low power, low power, 70 centimeters. This is the Nagoya NA717, high power, high power. All right, now we are going to do fan favorites, the Nagoya 771. This is the longer whip antenna for the Baofeng. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu with the Nagoya NA771, low power, low power. This is the Nagoya 771 on high power, high power. This is the Nagoya NA771 on low power, low power, 70 centimeters. This is the Nagoya NA771, high power, high power, 70 centimeters. Now a bit of the sausage making, I actually had to reshoot some of this video and then when I got done with the reshoots, I realized I didn't have the 2 meter recording for the Diamond SRH77CA, which I know, fan favorite, everybody loves this uh, antenna, but guess what, I've already tested it on 2 meters, and while not a fantastic showing on 2 meters topping out at 22 dB at 5 watts, uh, I did note that uh, it performed better on 70 centimeters, which I will show you now. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu with the Diamond Antenna SRH77CA, 70 centimeters, low power. This is the Diamond SRH77A, high power, 70 centimeters. So we struck a baseline with the signal stuff, signal stick, but um, I always like to put the long ranger in here as well to show you what the upper end looks like for a good, a very good performing antenna. So I usually go between this and the, the other extendable half-wave antenna. So anyway, Nagoya Long Ranger. This is 2 meters. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu with the MFJ Long Ranger. 
Down two meters. This is Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu with the MFJ Long Ranger on high power, high power, test, test, test. Now we can't do 70 centimeters with this, but you know, sometimes you don't really um, need that necessarily. If you're doing summits on the air, for instance, here in California, a lot of time it's on two meter simplex where you see the most activity. So a two meter antenna like this is pretty good. All right, I'm putting the BNC adapter back on because it's time you wanted to see this. <laughs> the Tway RDO. Now, I don't know if the orientation of this loop it matters, but we're gonna take a baseline uh, with it being broadside to my home and in line with my home. My home is that way. So let's uh, let's give this a shout. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu with the Tway RDO loop antenna. This is two meters, uh, two meter low power with the antenna broadside to the house. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu with the Tway RDO loop antenna. This is parallel or in line to the house, low power. This is Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu with the Tway RDO loop antenna. This is parallel to the house, parallel to the house. High power. This is Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu with the Tway RDO loop antenna. This is high power broadside to the house. Bad news, everybody. The Tway RDO loop antenna on 70 centimeters did not make it to my SDR. So I couldn't complete this test. I'll show you the, the clip there of my recording, but no, it was not heard on the other end. Probably need to do a little look into this antenna, but if you'd like to uh, hear some thoughts from someone else here on YouTube, go check out Temporarily Offline's video on it. I think he was reporting that um, the SWR is really bad on 70 centimeters, which uh, could be why it's not getting out, but did pretty well on two meters, I have to say. I was a little impressed there. All right, wrapping things up with the Tway RDO. This is the loop antenna. This is 70 centimeters low power, broadside to home. And this is the Tway Radio Loop Antenna parallel to home. This is the Tway Radio Loop Antenna on 70 centimeters, high power, broadside to home. And this is the Tway Radio Loop Antenna high power uh, parallel to home. Okay, so that's the receiver test. So we've now completed what we can do on the receive side of the house, we'll have numbers. I'll be overlaying them now, showing you what the number one antenna is in the uh, in this in this little format that I have. The goal here, remember, is to get the highest signal received at my house. If it's got a high signal, it's likely going to be a better long distance antenna. Obviously, the MFJ Long Ranger is probably the winner in this, which is great. But this is not a convenient antenna to take in the field. If the if the Nagoya NA717 performs as good as like a stock antenna, I'd be pretty impressed because this is a very convenient whippy antenna, which is nice. And then kind of in the middle, I find that the Signal Stuff Signal Sticks are convenient because they fold like this. They're very lightweight and they perform really well, even in comparison to things like the Nagoya and the Diamond, which are a bit heavier, a bit more firm, more rigid. I mean, this is still floppy, but in comparison to the Signal Stuff, it's, you can see they're, they're, they're quite a bit more floppy. Uh, man, that, that diamond doesn't have a lot of play, does it? Ah, I guess it does, they're pretty good. Anyway, this is my go-to. It has been for a long time, but let's flip it all back around now. Now we're going to test the receive capability of these antennas. Thought I'd give you another longer look here at the results, and uh, yeah, there's some uh, there's some interesting info here. So the first is not surprised to see the MF long, uh, MFJ Long Ranger at the top there for two meters, but then that loop came right up behind it. But then the loop doesn't make any showing on 70 centimeters, so I'm guessing quality control may be a problem with that. Again, go look at uh, To's video. He had the opposite situation as VSWR or VSWR was extremely high on two meters, but 70 centimeters was, was not that bad, yet mine um, seems to have the other problem, so maybe quality. The other interesting tidbit on the loop is that the broadside performance, even at low power, was better than that of the parallel configuration. So what does that mean? Well, you basically look through the hole in the loop in the direction you want to transmit and then transmit. So you can, it's like a sighting aperture. Anyway, um, that, that's what this is telling me looking at the results here. It did really well, even at low power. The thing that was really surprising though was that Nagoya 717 just slightly above its brother, the Nagoya 771, which is a much larger antenna. Now, it's possible, and, and this was brought up when I was looking at these antennas, I have two Nagoya 771s, and there is a thought that maybe one of my Nagoya 771s is a counterfeit. I'm already working on all kinds of thoughts for the next roundup of these uh, antennas, and I'm gonna tag the two antennas 
that I have, the 771s, and redo them uh, with this test. So we're gonna we're gonna see if we've got a a counterfeit in our mix, which would uh possibly affect its capability. Other than that, signal stuff, signal stick has a middle of the road showing, which is generally what I expect, and it's it's pretty universal for both um, two meters and seventy centimeters. All in all, not incredibly surprised, but uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. All right, so what I've got going on here, and pay attention to the screen on the ID52. I'm going to send a transmission in right now to hopefully uh, we'll see the signal. All right, so that was antenna one. That was our baseline signal stuff, signal stick. It seemed like it was fully quieting the radio, meaning it was giving all the signal, basically. It wasn't overloading it or anything, but it was giving it all it, it could give. This is the Diamond SRH77CA. There she is. All right, it's competitor, the Nagoya 771. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu antenna test. Okay, so that's that's no surprise. These both perform really well. Signal stick performs really well. So, so far, nothing surprises me. What's going to be curious is when I throw the loop antenna and this one on. So, this is the Nagoya... Oop, 717 antenna and yes i'm using adapters it's not causing any problem so I'll just keep that in mind we're good Kilo India 6, November, Alpha Zulu, antenna test. i should have ran this on low power i guess next time we're going to run this on low power wow that was uh that's perf <laughs> all these antennas are performing better than expected so we may have to redo this again uh with a with the transmitting radio on like super low power to give it something more challenging because this doesn't look like it's challenging it at all. They're doing very well, all of them. All right, here we go. The one you have wanted to see. So we'll start with broadside. Wow, so also, yeah, so take a look at the noise. Wow, none of the other anten uh, antennas were drawn in that much noise. Let's do, all right, so now we'll do in uh, parallel, and this will be the last test for this. <laughs> Even though it fell down, it's still doing just fine. Uh, well, I gotta say, I'm a little surprised on the reception test, but that's likely, by the way, I was using a handheld for the reception test back home, so at most five watts, which is pretty good from my point of view. Um, that is on my home dual band antenna, my big 15 foot vertical. So it's likely that I need to put that in like extra low power and redo this. So I'm gonna take the kind of the all stars, if you will, anyway, from these antenna tests we've been doing and redo this again uh, for the reception test because I, I think that's a, a worthy worthy cause to see what the dropout rate is, right? At some point, I assume that this little whippy guy is not gonna perform nearly as good as say the signal stuff signal stick. There's no reason to put the long ranger on this and do the reception test because it's already maxing out the scale on all of these antennas. So look forward to that on a future video. I do have one surprise antenna though, so let's uh, let's set that up right now. All right, so even at low power, the even if I put the HT in low power, this next antenna, there's no point in doing a reception test. I know it's gonna be the loudest. You might already know what this is gonna be. Some of you may not, and that's part of the reason why we're doing it. This is a roll-up J-pole. It's twin lead that has been cut to length, and then strategically little cuts, little notches have been placed along the line. This is a dual band antenna that rolls up, packs away in your kit. So when I was talking about those extendable antennas, you know, I think on the first video I did, I was saying how you may want to carry one of these in your bag and use the stock antenna or something like a signal stuff signal stick, right? Like that. Well, this is like the, the ultimate portable antenna in, in that regard, because you, you wait until you get to where you're going, then you set this thing up, take the stock antenna off, and run off of this guy. And that's what we're going to do right now. I brought the Tactical Mini along with me, which is a telescopic 
pole. I find these are <laughs> fantastic. All telescopic poles, you need to have at least one. Most likely you won't stop yourself until you have three or four. I'm gonna take out, I'm gonna just call it the first piece here. So I'm gonna take some gear snake. So I'm holding my gear snake. There's a little zip tie at the end here. I'm gonna run the gear snake through. Set it up right on the end here so that it kind of hangs down. And then I'm gonna give it a real tight pull on here. Okay. About that high is where I want it to be. About like that, maybe one more section. Grab my other zip tie, go through the hole in the table. All right, so I'm hooked up here to the antenna. That goes up. I'm on two meters, low power. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu with the roll up J pole, low power, low power. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, roll up J pole, high power, high power. Okay, let's flip it over to 70 centimeters test. Low power. Due to unrelated interference, I didn't get the low power recording audio on the SDR. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, roll up J pole. This is high power, high power. Okay, so that's uh, what I'm guessing is going to be the strongest antenna we tested to date. Well, my assumption was all wrong here. The MFJ Long Ranger beat out the roll up J pole. Advantage of the roll up J pole, though, is that it does do 70 centimeters as well, which again, I had SDR issues through the whole entire recording of this. So we'll do another video, I promise. Uh, MFJ Long Ranger and then a series of J-Pole roll-up antennas, which uh, should be a lot of fun and we'll clear this up, but already pretty surprised by the two meter capabilities of that MFJ. These are, these are pretty effective. It's a good little option to keep in your pack as well, as then you always have something uh, when you get to where you're going, that can reach out a lot further. For those of you that are interested in things like APRS, you might consider a roll-up J-pole and a simple little, um, a simple little telescopic mast like this. I'll post a link in the description to one that you know packs down to about yay big, and I think it'll get you about 12 feet or so. That's plenty for what you want to do with this, most likely. So that'll get you running pretty well. Or you can just hoist it up into a tree and get to work that way. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have some comments or questions, leave them down below. If you have a recommendation on an antenna I should test out here in the park with my new test setup, dual band, so I can do 70 centimeters and two meters, as well as a transmit test. Again, we'll do an all-stars video, if you will, and bring our best antennas out here that we're good at transmitting and also still, you know, portable like signal sticks and those kind of things. And we'll do a receive test with really low power and we'll see which antennas rise to the top. Anyway, I had a lot of fun making this video. As always, these antenna videos are like some of my favorite ones that I've been doing recently. So really appreciate your support. Give me a thumbs up if you have not. Consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you know when I post another one of these videos or I go live. I'm Josh KI6NAZ, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.